This is the, what I am going to speak very quickly, but mainly what I want to uh, bring to you is to comment some paradigms. Some of them are erroneous, some of them are obsolete, and some are new paradigms significant to discuss with you. And my approach is going, I am going to speak a little bit about global issues, but mainly about the local issues, so it's a change from the preceding speakers. Well, uh, this is, uh, well, this is important thing, and I am going to present it rather in very quick uh, sentences, like they call silver bullets. And, and you can, in any time, raise your hand and to say, uh, interrupt me. Well, this is a, someone has comment, uh, commented, uh, some people call this era the Anthropocene era because uh, the man has changed so much the environment that this is something completely different from the previous times. So we cannot say that the old saying, historia magistre vitae, is not, um, today is not valid because the, the change is so, so deep so strong that uh, the history is not a good precedent. Uh, well, for instance, there are two significant, there are more um, uh, milestones in this change. The one is, probably some of you have heard, the beginning of the environmental movement. Well, one of the factors was a novel a, a written by Russell Carlson called The Silent Spring. Silent Spring, is this lady, wrote that uh, no more, it was about 40 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, that there are the, the spring in the U.S. was silent because the birds were not singing, because the pesticides had killed all the, all the birds because of the intensive agriculture uh, uh, use of agrochemicals. Then it has an impact, an impact in a certain way similar to the the Cabana del Tio Tom, I don't remember, for the, for the finish of the slavery in two, two centuries ago. Then another interesting milestone is Lynn White was a British historian that about 40 years, 50 years ago wrote a paper, I cannot remember the exact name, telling that the cause of the environmental disasters was the Western or Judeo-Christian civilization, that the Genesis mainly, that the Genesis says the, the Lord told to the humans, grow and multiply and dominate the earth. And this was the origin of this domination, was really a tyranny, it was the RLC case, was the, at that time the Great Lakes in the USA was in fire, the river was polluted, the Thames River was a, a sewage. Uh, well, then this was began a, a controversy that was very useful. The only thing, and now is the thing is different, people speak about the, the stewardship of earth by the, by the humans, so the good administration, that is what we are speaking here. And then a uh, peculiar, curious thing, Lynn White told the only people, the only person that uh, is different was St. Francis of Assisi. The, you know that in the Anglo-Saxon country, Francis of Assisi has a certain prestige because he uh, began to speak about the, the brother wolf, the brother water, the brother son, etc. And uh, Lynn White told that Francis of Assisi should be uh, declared the patron of the colleges. That's the only thing he, he was right, because he was declared the patron of the ecologist. But um, the, the other thing uh, has changed. For instance, the Thames River today is a clean river. The salmon is, is, is swimming upstream until Oxford. That is 100 kilometers. And many other rivers in the USA have changed. In Spain, only, for instance, not far from here, the Nervion River has been clean and some of the rivers still are very, very dirty in Spain, but 
Well, let me see. Well, what are the main drivers of change? In my opinion, this is important to perhaps the main change. We, we are speaking about water. Well, really, water and food and energy are very, very much related issues. But the main cause, in my opinion, is the globalization. Globalization, the virtual water trade. Let me ask you a question. What here in the raise your hand, the one who knows what is virtual water, the concept of virtual water? Nobody has this heard about this? But this is the crucial point, virtual water, for the new changes, also in, in energy. Well, another I will explain later on. Membrane technology and digitalization is an important issue and the groundwater intensive use silent revolution, and also the information technology in water governance because of transparency and participation. Well, this, you know, there is, today is a fashion, it's a good fashion, that is necessary more democ democracy, more participation of the people in the decision, and it is necessary to have the, the willingness of the people, not only the politicians, to, to implement all these things we are speaking here. So in the information technology the, or the social uh, networks is very important. Well, this small thing is, is really very important for the, for the society today. Uh, you know, more, even more than the internet, the, the, the cell phones. Well, then, uh, well, excuse me, this is... Let me speak a little about some erroneous paradigms in water. Well, there is what we call the pervasive uh, paradigm, hydrocentrics too. Well, I have been working 60 years already for water because I am 81 years old, and I began to work in this when I was a teenager with my father, was the director of a Confederación Hidrográfica Water Authority in Spain. Then, but the, the situation in Spain, in all over the world, in most of the world, has changed so much that the, the importance, the relevance of water is not so much. Obviously, without water, there is no life. That is just a truth. But water is not so important. Eh? This, is, this is, in Spanish, to uh, echar piedras contra mi propio tejado. But this is, uh, is important to tell that. In Spain, we have a lot of conflicts, water conflicts, hydrological conflicts between regions. Not here in this area, this is a green country, the north of Spain. But this is rebels without a motive, and we will explain a little bit later on this. Well, during the last decade of the last century, even the beginning of this, was in the newspaper, many people were speaking about the water wars. The, the 21st century was to be the, the, the century of the water wars, not for the, for the oil, but for the water. This is a hydromyth. It has no connection with reality. This was promoted by the Egyptian, well, more more than one, but we, because for Egypt, for Egypt, it's crucial. It was crucial, it's not anymore. The Nile River uh, Basin, and the Nile River Basin has 10 countries, and the last one is Egypt, and Egypt is a desert, and they thought that they need all the water of the Nile River. Well, this is, fortunately, this is changing a lot because of the, because of the food trade. And then, well, but the question is that this hydromyth was dismantled but a professor of Oregon State, Warren Wolf, we were speaking last night with Professor Iturbe. This Warren Wolf is a professor of geography in Oregon State University, and about almost 20 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, published a paper telling, well, in the Oregon State University, they have an archive with files of all the armed conflicts during, since Charlemagne, so it's 11 centuries about 5,000 armed conflicts. Only 20, 30 of them were because of water in that time. And most of them, it lasts between Syria and Israel and so on. And at the same time, there was in the last two centuries, 250 agreements between countries about water. And the peculiar thing is, even if some guys have been 
armed conflict, for instance, between India and Pakistan, they have kept the agreement about water for the Indus River. So the idea is that water is, a, is an element for participation, for cooperation, not for conflict. Hmm. Well, another important thing is uh, this is in Spain, this is the usual um, wrong idea. Water demand is not equal to water needs. Water demand that is very frequently used is similar to water needs. And water demand, or demand in general, is an economic uh, concept and related to price. If the price is almost nil, the demand is almost infinite. And that is the main problem now in Spain. Well, a few weeks ago, the Commission, the European Commission, has warned to the Spanish, well, I have to go on fastly. We we'll leave this for the when some, op some paradigms are obsolete, for instance, that the groundwater is negligible, it has changed a lot. Uh, the Spanish government could not control groundwater resources because water was private property and not a public good. False paradigm. This is not true. Water management has to be done by watersheds. Well, we are very proud of the Spaniards because in Spain, at the same time, the Tennessee Valley Authority have the main administration that the Ebro River uh, Confederación Hidrográfica for water management. This is not so important today. The water policy is done by the import and export in the countries. So this is not done by, by watershed. And another thing is that drought has been mainly mitigated by building hydraulic infrastructure. This is the usual uh, thought in Spain is wrong. Well, new paradigms. Eh? Well, the interest uh, has increased. That is uh, after the, the, talk, the lecture by uh, Professor Iturbe. I have nothing to add to, to this. But only I would like to say something about that. That is, is necessary. I think this is the way shown by Professor Iturbe is very important for the young people because really today uh, we don't know what really means hydrological health. Yeah. And this is very important to include all this. The price of water should include all cost. We have a seminar about this in the Academy of Science just two weeks ago with a professor of Harvard, Professor Roger. And well, and this is the important thing. Ninety percent of human water consumption uses green and blue and blue yeah, is for production of food and fiber. This is related also to, to energy. And this is a concept that is crucial for to understand everything. Well, then everybody speaks about the integrated water resources management. Well, it requires an equilibrium. And that, I think for me this is the key issue also related to Professor Iturri's uh, presentation, previous presentation. We think, and we have written about that, and we are working about that in the Putin Foundation, that um, this is a desideratum, something that we have to, to try to get, the integrated water sources management, but has two main parts. One is what we call the quantified or metrificable concept, that is, uh, of values of water, that is mainly volumes of water, the dollars related to the use of that water, and the jobs. Eh? And this is but the metrification, and that is another that the intangible values. Intangible values cannot be quantified so easily. There are attempts to do that. The previous presentation by Professor uh, Iturbe is, uh, is the beginning, well, the beginning, not the beginning, but how to measure the, for instance, the ecological values. This is only one aspect. The ecological values is very important. But you see, it's a complex issue and it has to be improved a lot. But there's another one. In Spain, it's very important. The water is a political weapon. In Spain, in many countries, water is used as a political weapon to, for the next election. And this is a, really a problem because politicians, the objective function of the politician are the next elections, and usually are three, four years uh, from the moment. And then water planning requires 10, 15 years. And this is a, a very serious problem. 
Well, and another thing very important to take into account is the farmers' lobby all over the world. It's impossible to, to implement a new water policy without the farmers. And this is the same. It might be the USA, where farmers are 2 3% of the population, or to India, where it's 60%, or to Israel, it's 2%. But in, a, in all these countries, it's necessary to, to, to work with the farmers. It's necessary to find solutions, what sociologists call win-win, is it not zero some uh, solution because if farmers are going to lose, it's very difficult to change the situation. Then we suggest that for industrialized and emerging countries like Brazil, we are working now with Brazil, uh, the new motor should be more cash and more care uh, of nature per drop, not more crops and jobs per drop, more cash and care of nature per drop. And this is not good for all countries because, uh, for instance, for Madagascar or for Guinea-Bissau, this is not, uh, cannot be applied, but yes, for the industrialized and emerging countries probably. Well, this is conclusion is this. And let me, the last thing, oh, is not my slide was, well, the last thing I want to say is, well, we are now working with a new innovative method to study the the water planning for water setting. We have used the Guadalquivir River for that. It's already published, you can find it. What is the, the, the innovation? We include blue water, green water, the demand of the ecosystem, so the, the forest, the dehesas in Spain, and also the human needs. An important thing, for instance, 90% of the blue water, that is surface water or aquifer water, use is for agriculture. In agriculture in southern Spain, most of the agriculture is for low cost crops. This is meaningless today. This was important 30 years ago with the self sufficiency, is an important old paradigm, self sufficient in food. But today is meaningless. We are in the European Union and we are in a globalized market. So, for instance, uh, using the water to produce uh, white, uh, wheat, excuse me, wheat or corn in Andalusia, this is a, a waste of, of water. We can use to produce the horticulture, such as tomatoes, etc., or for solar energy, that is very important in, in, in South Spain. And this, the beautiful thing of this, this can be done without social disturbance. Because the needs, for instance, of for golf courses is another issue. Uh, the water needed for tourists, for golf courses, is one of the examples. In Spain, in that part, for instance, 1% of the water, the water used for agriculture, low value agriculture, is 80, 85%. So there is no problem to take some of the water. The, the farmers are willing to do that. Eh? And this is, well, we have no time. This is also the solution for the water supply to Madrid, to water supply to Barcelona. It's not water transfer. The solution is change, reassign the allocation of water. And this can be done um, probably without easily because economically it's feasible. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.